Hello, and welcome back to XRP Vault, where we bring you the most recent and intriguing XRP news. We're giving away 10,000 XRP to those who are watching. All you have to do is upvote, subscribe, comment XRP is king, and watch the video to the end to be end to be eligible. The winners will be picked next month and publicized on the community page of the channel. In this video, I want to discuss a recent development between Ripple and one of the biggest banks in the world, HSBC. However, I also want to discuss why banks like HSBC are so reluctant to discuss how they are using Ripple and how they plan to use XRP in the future despite the connections between these banks. We frequently hear that the major financial institutions will never utilize XRP because it is too volatile. However, as I'll demonstrate, this couldn't be further from the truth and will startle you. Finally, I want to discuss the state of the market at the conclusion of this video. According to a very intriguing chart, I want to show you in relation to that how severe is the current downturn we are in and how bad will it get. And I believe it will much improve your understanding of the current situation and give you a clearer notion of where we might be headed. I want to start off by discussing a rather intriguing situation involving Ripple and HSBC. And folks, we have no concrete evidence that this is related to Ripple or XRP. I want to explain to you folks why I am positive that this is the person who HSBC is referring to. Let's go right into it first. Despite the fact that the bank in France and HSBC have independent DLT infrastructures, 24 hours in crypto was able to detect this. Bridging software, which facilitates cross, network dult, and interoperable transactions can connect them. Utilizing the Weave interoperability tool, distributed ledgers based on Hyperledger Fabric, as well as R3 quarters, were also integrated. So gentlemen, as said, we have no direct relation to Ripple or XRP, especially in this blue section. However, what we can take away from this is that it appears to have been written by Ripple, and it exactly captures what Ripple and XRP accomplish, which is to enable interoperable transactions across networks via DAW. The fact that these solutions are also employed in conjunction with the first thing they said teaches us that this is not referring to Hyperledger Fabric or our three quarters. What leads me to believe that they are especially discussing XRP and Ripple? Despite the fact that they discuss it in detail, guys, we all know that Chris Larson, the creator of Ripple, has a close relationship with HSBC. Look at this, Chris Larson the founder of Ripple, is hired by HSBC to advise the bank's Finch initiatives. To advise the bank's Finch initiatives. What do you suppose Chris Larson is recommending to them? He will undoubtedly talk extensively on Ripple and XRP and assist HSBC in integrating Ripple solutions with their existing infrastructure. It goes without saying that these two topics are closely related. That raises the question of why HSBC is reluctant to disclose that they are collaborating with Ripple and XRPP because they have no trouble discussing alternative ideas, as we can see down below right now. They alluded to Hyperledger. Additionally, they brought up our third quarter. What is the main distinction between these two items then? The people concerned with Reef Health could not access these items. The secondary market did not have any token trading. Additionally, there was no method for small-scale investors to fund these two businesses. In essence, they are doing this to prevent retail from overrunning the institutions with a wave of customers. Institutions are currently unable to invest in XRP. While some can, Restrictions prevent the majority of them from doing so. Before they invest in it, they need to understand the status of XRP. 
These large financial entities do not want certain things to occur. They do not want to be able to outcompete retail. This explains why XRP is such a fun topic. They want to exclude shopping. Before they can build their positions, they don't want retail to raise the price of XRP. One of the main causes of the Ripple SEC case's importance for XRP is that it will establish XRP as the precedent. Critically investable cryptocurrency will be able to flow in once XRPI has been given clear legal certainty by the courts. However, they don't want to convey to people the importance of Ripple and XRP as their answers prior to the implementation of that rule. Because if they did, retail would be able to outperform the institutions. Guys, it simply seems so clear to me that this is what is happening. HSBC outlines applying the Ripple solution literally. We are aware that they had previously collaborated with Ripple. Additionally, they listed two additional items that can be mistaken for this solution and stated, nope, it's not Hyperledger, and it's not Corte either, since this indicates that the biggest banks worldwide are preparing to use Ripple and XRP. They simply don't want you to be aware of it. Because claiming that XRP is too volatile is one of the main ways individuals try to dissuade people from the concept that banks would adopt it in the future. But XRP people, Darren, does a great job of explaining why this is completely false. And this demonstrates the relationship between asset volatility and liquidity, demonstrating that for XRP, Liquidity is by far the most crucial factor. Many people mistakenly believe that XRP is a payment token because it is excellent for payments and will be utilized for payments. However, XRP is actually a liquidity token. According to David Schwartz, XRP XRP's primary objective was to be pure liquidity, which it is capable of being. However, because volatility is crucial to creating strong liquidity, I won't go into detail in this tweet about why volatility is so beneficial for liquidity because it is really complex. But be sure to look into that if you're interested in learning more. I want to inform you folks that several stable coins will be developed on the XRP ledger. And since they will be used for payments, the volatility problem is entirely resolved. The volatility of XRP becomes completely irrelevant once a stable coin is present on the XRP ledger. It's only serving as a means of liquidity. In that situation, volatility is a positive thing. It is completely illogical to think. It is completely illogical to think that XRP needs to remain stable. Big banks don't require a stable mechanism to conduct transactions. They can create a stable coin on any network. Therefore, the more volatile XRP is, the better solution it is for the big banks. Hi, Chi stable coins will be developed on the XRP ledger and are simple to implement. But folks, liquidity is the most crucial factor for banks and one of their major problems in our conventional financial system. They require additional liquidity as well as the ability to increase the liquidity of various trades. Currently, the big banks' primary trades, those that are simple to execute frequently, such trading us dollars for euros, are very liquid trades. However, when it comes to more asymmetric exchanges, such as the U.S. dollar to, say, the currency of some African nations, that is not a liquid drain and it is a major problem for banks. By ensuring that everything is liquid to everything, XRP addresses this problem. I broke that down in a lengthy video, and if anyone wants to see another one, I'll do it. However, you should be aware that XRP's volatility is a quality that improves its liquidity, and higher liquidity is the most crucial aspect of XRP stability. Therefore, stable coins should address that, and the answer is straightforward.
because I want to wrap up this video by briefly discussing the present market conditions. XRP does not need to be stable because that would harm the cryptocurrency. And I frequently encounter this chart. Compared to 2002, it is 2008. In essence, this indicates that if 2008 were to repeat itself, the same tip 500 would decline considerably more. Guys, it's quite safe to predict that if this occurs, the SIR 500 will decline because that is how the... But the tweet from Anders Owl that I want to break down for you guys is quite significant. And gentlemen, in my opinion, we are completely in agreement with this. I wouldn't anticipate it if everyone thinks the Great Recession is imminent. People need to understand that financial markets take the future into account less. Therefore, whatever is anticipated has already been accounted for in the prices. Guys, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Everyone and their mother believes that a repeat of the 2008 disaster is imminent. Everyone believes that a Great Depression is imminent. It's all bad news everywhere. Everyone believes that there will be a significant decline similar to this. And I frequently notice fractals like this on my timeline. This indicates to me that people are overly bearish. This suggests to me that the majority of people will be mistaken, as though everyone believes that there is a recession and that it has probably already been factored into stock prices. Guys, if everyone believes it's going to happen, it's crucial to realize that it probably won't. Many people are already betting on crypto evaporating and the SEP 500 entering a last correction from 2008. But that probably won't happen. It probably won't, though, since it is worse. Given how terrible 2008 was, I seriously doubt that is the case. However, I believe that rather than things turning out to be as horrible as everyone anticipates, the more likely scenario will be that nothing will go as planned. No one can foretell the future, guys. What will transpire in this situation is unknown. But I believe Andrews actually put it best here. Right now, everything looks bleak for everyone. Everyone believes that something similar will occur. And generally, the reverse happens when everyone anticipates something. Just something to consider, really. Of course, nobody knows what will occur. But folks, I genuinely appreciate this point of view. I actually do believe that being the contrarian is crucial because Andrew is typically right in this situation. But I do agree with him as well. We will just have to wait and see if we are halfway there or have already reached the bottom, but please take it into consideration anyway. Thank you so much for attending. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. For the time being, it truly means a lot.